Ooh, guys, we can eat these. Thank you for your eggs. Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. What's up, my boo high squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to a new vlog here at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. I'm about to go into the chicken coop. Let's go, guys. All right, guys, so here are our chickens. First of all, I see these chickens all lying down. That's cool. But look, we've installed metal bars for now um, because this is where the chickens will roost. Like, chickens need to sleep raised up high off the ground. Um, oops, someone's aggressive because, look, eggs. Now, I don't know who they belong to. I thought they belonged to the silkies, but this black one, who they were saying is an egg layer, has been sitting on it. So, I guess they're hers? And I don't know, will a, will a chick come out of there? We don't... We have this little silky rooster, but I don't think, like, see, that's a guy. He's the only rooster we have. And something tells me he's not able to mate with that Godzilla of a chicken. So I don't think these are fertilized. But then if they, are, if they do belong to this female silky, then they are fertilized. Because I think they've been mating. So should I just leave that there and see if chicks hatch? Like, I don't want to eat it if there are chicks in there. <laughs> I don't feel like having scrambled eggs, like, with a sisu, with a fetus in there. So, I don't know, I think I'll just let them sit on it and see what comes out. Um, but, I, I really can't wait for these chickens to start constantly laying eggs so I can eat the eggs, okay? No fighting. Guys, you know what I've learned? Chicken squabble. I guess this is why they call it hen pecking or like pecking order. See, look, the black chicken's gonna go back in and sit on the eggs. Yeah, see, she's gonna go sit on them. <sighs> okay, what I think is happening is she's laying and then she's ignoring the eggs and that black one just instinctively is mothering them, which is strange because I read that silkies are used to be mothers. Like they'll adopt other chickens' eggs chickens who aren't good mothers farmers use silkies to like take care of eggs but that's cool okay guys you are such a crash course on chicken society to me although as a kid <laughs> my dad brought home a chicken and a rooster and we kept them in toronto which I, again is illegal because you can't keep farm animals in the city but we did anyways we're bad but we ended up eating the chickens. But I, what I looked forward to every day was gathering the eggs. So, see, look, she's totally sitting on them. Uh, you're such a good mom. Look, look at her. Oh my gosh, oh, it's so cute. Such a good mom. Yay, I hope they hatch. They will be silky babies. Okay, and now strangely, this black one is checking out that nest. What's she doing? I think she's going around checking out all the nests. She's like, is this a better place? Oh, those are eggs in there too. Our chickens have been laying a lot. Oh, she's going to every nest to like sit on them. <gasps> oh, wow. Someone, oh, look at her. She's so good. Rotating the eggs. And this one taking notes. Oh, this mother is so good. OMG, why am I tearing up this morning? Motherhood, motherhood is so beautiful. Even chicken motherhood. Do you want me to move those eggs all together so you can sit on all four? Guys, she's doing shifts. <laughs> she's doing like a double shift here. We need more chickens to brood these eggs. Okay, interesting. Okay, so apparently this male rooster is starting to really learn etiquette and how to properly court a hen because he's a lot more gentle now with this hen. When they first arrived and they were first put together, he was so rough. He like just wanted to get in there and like she would put him in his place. She would like attack him. You guys saw in the vlog. 
But now he's a lot more gentle. He's such a gentleman or gentle rooster. He's learning the rules. How cute. Guys, chickens are so smart. This almost makes me want to not eat chicken. Like guys, the other day, RJ bought chicken from the store and I didn't eat it. Because like, now that we have chickens, it's like I'm eating our pets. I do gotta get over it though, guys, because I mean the whole purpose of getting chickens was for eggs, but also to possibly eat the chickens. And I have a question guys, for all of you who know, these chicken feeds, is there a possibility that there are hormones in here? I hope not, because if so, we're gonna stop feeding them this. I mean, ultimately, I want the chickens free roam of our, like, lot here. And then I heard that once they learn that this is home, they'll just come here in the night on their own. Like, we won't need to even train them to do it. This is just what they do. I think that's what we're gonna do. Here, I'm going to help this mama out. Seriously, putting my coffee down. Going to grab these eggs, and I'm gonna give it to her. Here, I'm gonna put these with, with those eggs, okay? Here you go. Oh! Oh my gosh! I'm sorry! Oh, oh no! Oh no! This egg broke! Oh no! I think I accidentally caused her to murder an egg. Ew! It's like soft. Oh my gosh, there's a yolk! Oh. Okay, wait, let's remove this. I wanna put all the eggs together. Okay, sorry. Oops. Guys, I'm not gonna hurt you okay no need to panic okay I need to leave this chicken coop because I mean I feel like I'm becoming a chicken I am going to feed them their seed mix here guys seeds go that's a nice seed mix there's even hot peppers there too go here are the iguanas there's Adam he just came down from the branch there's Magnus, morning Mags, um, and then Eve is way down there by the blue bin with soil. Guys, I th we believe she's gravid, she's got eggs, and we hope she will lay them. And as an update, the two males have been getting along. No fights, thank goodness. Um, Magnus is very clear with his boundaries. I have seen him attempt to not really bite, but check um, Eve and Adam when he's in a place that he doesn't approve, that's near him. Um, he'll just like bite lightly their, like their tail. Not a hard bite, but it's kind of like in a strong enough bite to let them know that he doesn't like what, where they are. <laughs> but I do not see them fighting. Sometimes I see all three iguanas piled on top of each other. So they've just established their own natural order. The enclosure is large enough for them to do that so that they can each have their own space. They can all be in the shade if they want to. They can all be in the sun if they want to. Um, but the alpha, which is Magnus here, has claimed this massive stick as his spot. Like he hardly ever leaves this spot and the younger iguanas kind of move around. It's really cool to see. The dynamics of iguana society, almost as interesting as chicken society. Hi there, Adam. You look so good there. So guys, I feel really bad because it's Saturday, which means it's the day that I promise my Ant channel subscribers, the AC family, that a video goes up. And normally it would go up by 9 p.m. tonight, um, or half the year, 8 p.m. tonight, um, daylight savings. But guys, these past few videos, if you haven't seen, have been so hard to do. They've been so long. Each video has trended, like, around the world, so they've been performing really well. Actually, the channel now has been doing better than it ever has, strangely. It kind of really just exploded again. Um, so yeah, I've been putting in extra juice into every single video and every single video has uploaded late Either several hours late or even a whole day late and I feel really bad every time that happens But I don't want to release something that I rush and am not proud of 
Um, so yeah, I feel really bad guys. Today's video won't be uploading tonight. It'll probably upload tomorrow. But I mean, these episodes, it's called the uh, Ecosystem Vivarium series, are, have just been mind blowing to create. You guys have to watch the channel. It's Ants Canada if you haven't yet. But yeah, sorry AC family for being late again. As soon as I feel like the work is affecting my health, I put the brakes on and I slow things down and I don't let it overcome my mental health because that I've been there where the work just takes precedence over everything, including health, and that's not a good place to be, not sustainable either. As soon as I feel like I'm editing these videos because I have to and because I need to earn money, or I need to please an audience and I'm no longer doing it for myself and for my own enjoyment, that's when I know I'm not in a healthy place. So instead of slaving away by the computer this morning, I'm taking a walk with my coffee, hanging out with my chickens and lizards because I need to. Anyway, I'll be back in the studio in a sec. And yay, these little farmer joys, egg yolk, dried up egg yolk, on my hand. Time to wash up. Good morning, Mabuhai squad. How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Just hanging out in the aviary outside aviary. Um, and the Conyers are here busy destroying this pepper plant. See? Destroying it as they usually do with plants. Um, but what's cool is, so this pepper plant actually has little tiny hot peppers and parrots love hot peppers. They don't feel the heat, the capus quesum or whatever it's called. Whatever it is that causes that burning sensation to us people. Birds don't have the receptors to feel that. Um, so they love hot peppers and they are going throughout this plant picking the hot peppers and what's cool is the seeds get thrown down there. See all those hot pepper seeds? So the birds are actually planting more pepper plants for the future. That's so cool. That's sustainable playing. They love, love, love destroying this plant. I think it's a brilliant idea to have a pepper plant growing in the aviary like this. Although I think this is gonna die. I think this whole plant will eventually die if they don't decide to leave it alone. The other pepper plant, which is way down there, is doing, doing pretty good. Um, and it looks like it's even starting to climb the aviary, so that's cool. That'll hopefully survive these birds. But knowing these birds, I mean, in the indoor aviary, they were destroying tr whole trees. So, you know, it's only a matter of time, maybe. Enjoy, guys! But I remember when I planted that plant, that pepper plant, it took forever! It took ages! Peppers really take their time to sprout from seeds. So it'll be well in the future when those seeds sprout. Hey guys, can I touch your belly? <laughs> can I pet your belly? They don't like it, okay. But guys, look at their colors. Their colors now, that they've like had lots of great sun and all of that, their feather quality is something else. Like their colors just pop. Billy. Billy's eating grass. All right guys, so it's about 12 p.m. and I'm visiting the iguanas. They are hanging out. They had a whole morning to sun and there's Magnus rubbing his head against the wood because he's shedding. He's trying to shed the skin on his head. Up there is Adam. Hi Adam. Nice to see ya. And Eve up there. Both these iguanas had a lot of sun, they're cooling off. Magnus also kind of cooling off as well. It's a hot day today, huh? Are you guys ready for summer? OMG, summer here is going to be intense. So RJ and I have been talking and the chickens and the bunnies, they'll be rather cool because they're under the trees. 
but the aviary and these iguanas will be subjected to the heat. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to install maybe misters or have like, you know, a sprinkler happening um, through the day for the iguanas uh, and for the birds, maybe. We'll see. But summer's coming, guys. It's starting the end of next month to March. It gets really hot and I can't wait. I love summer here in the Philippines. It's my favorite. This Canadian does not like cold. I don't like it. I don't like cold plunge. I don't like snow. I have so many memories freezing at the bus stop, coming home from school. Freezing my fingers. I couldn't feel my fingers or my face. Sorry guys, all of you in winter currently. I don't know, some people like it. I don't. I, I like heat, I like saunas, I like deserts. Oh, love going to Dubai. I just, there's something about the heat that just, I don't know, It's I, I have tropical blood. Oh my gosh, you guys should have seen what I just saw. So Eilish loves jumping around and playing, but she has like a leash on <laughs> and she knocked over the manger full of water. You got a little carried away there, huh? I actually can't wait for us to get a fence so that we can have like our animals kind of free roaming. I don't know why we don't have a fence yet. Are you okay? I know you are. Um, I think it's mostly because we're still doing work here before we actually build a fence. Um, and then plus, we're gonna have neighbors soon. I think they might start building. So not sure how we're gonna build a, a fence. Like it might, it might not match what they want for their property. I don't know, we'll see. But we could at least put up a temporary sort of like makeshift sh fence at least. So that, you know, our goats can walk around, free roam. Chickens, can't wait for them to be free roam too. Um, and I would also like to get a peacock. I already have a breeder. The breeder of these pheasants that we have. Where are the pheasants? I think they're in their bushes. They also provide peacocks. And the reason why I want a peacock is, well, first of all, it's been a dream to have a peacock, but also they're really good at eating snakes and like keeping snakes away. Like in the wild, peacocks will eat cobras and we have cobras here. So I would love to have a peacock just patrolling the area and eating up any snakes. Um, and I asked the breeder and she told me that as long as we feed this peacock, and it learns that this is home, it could be free, free roam. It'll probably jump up in the tree, hang out walking along the fence, jump up on the top of the aviary and all of that, but it still can be free roam. So that's cool. I can't wait to have peafowl. That'll be interesting. Guys, birds are awesome. Birds and reptiles. They are super awesome. Did you guys hear that? Our rooster is crowing, so cute. <laughs> Our silky rooster, you're so cute. Now guys, another update is we received these. RJ ordered them online and they are clean feeders. So I guess this is for water and this is for food, but the food... Com <laughs> your, your crow is so cute. But the food com holes are not open, let's see. Is there even food inside or is this the... Okay, it's just the container. So the idea is you fill this with their food and then it... <coughs> yes. And then it falls into here and then the chickens can actually stick their heads in and eat. So I guess like you would have to open there and then nothing spills or anything like that. They only eat what they need. How does that work? Like. They stick their head in there like that? Or does this have to be turned like this? There, I think it's supposed to be like that. The other way. And then the water one, very self-explanatory. Do it again. There you go. It's such a funny sound. Okay, so as for the eggs, here are three silky eggs. I mean, I don't know if they're fertilized and I don't even know if anyone's sitting on them anymore. The black chicken is there. 
And I think the black chicken has laid these eggs. So if it's from the black chicken, I don't think they're fertilized. So like, I bet we could eat these. Should I gather them? Yeah, I'll gather them. Let's eat them. I don't think they're fertilized. Ooh, guys, we can eat these. Thank you for your eggs. Oh, black chicken. Please sit on those because it doesn't seem like the white one is sitting on them. Oh my gosh, I'm done. Guys, I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning. It's now 8.03 p.m. and it's done. I've been working on this all day. The New Ants Canada video uploading tonight. One whole day late, <laughs> but that's okay. I really enjoyed creating that video and I hope the AC family does too. Uh, but anyways, guys, guess what's cooked now? The eggs. Oh, they look so yellow. They're native eggs? Okay, RJ's calling them native eggs, which, what does that mean? Does that mean like wild chicken? It's so strange because <laughs> he calls wild chicken chickens that are on a farm and aren't on a commercial farm like the eggs that you buy at the grocery. It's the same thing, except our chickens are just like in the backyard. Although now that I'm looking at this egg, it looks more yellow than usual. What does that mean? I don't know. Let's, let's try it. At least there's no chick inside. <laughs> let's try it. RJ saying it might be gamey. I'm like, what? Like, malansa, as in like fishy. Let's try it. Mmm. Tastes like eggs. Yeah. Mmm. But almost like a richer version. It's like richer. Mmm. I don't know if it's just mental, but I think I can taste the difference. Mmm. It's like somehow I taste the yolk more. You know what I mean? Mmm. Oh my. Yay! Our homegrown eggs. Love it. I'm gonna go collect more tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, chickens. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? Are you guys liking your new watering and food system? These silky hair, the hair of these silkies crack me up. But we're now using the new feeding system. I love it. So we can actually get rid of this now. But let's check for eggs. I see two silky eggs there. And yay! I see an egg here. Hope you don't mind me taking it. Cause they're delicious. How about here? None? None. Okay. Man, there's so much poop everywhere and it's huge. The chicken poop. Now, chicken poop can be used for fertilizer, but guys, get this. It's considered hot fertilizer, so it needs to be aged. And guess how long? It needs to be aged for like a year in the sun. Isn't that crazy? We gotta keep your poop for a year before giving it to our plants. Anyways, thanks for the egg. Ah, oh, somebody slept in her room. Hi there, Eilish. Yes, hi Eilish. How are you? We're gonna let you out in a bit. So you can graze. <laughs> She's so cute. Good morning, iguanas. What's up? There's Magnus and who is that? That is Eve. Hi guys. And there's Adam waiting for the sun. So this here is Eilish's room. <laughs> Hi Eilish. We had to add these bars because we were surprised that she could jump over this wall. And we put a pallet there because that's where they sleep, I guess. But it's cool that she can have her leash removed and she's got full room here. There's uh, some banana peels in there for her to snack on during the night if she's hungry but we're going to lead her now to a big patch of grass. There's Billy, he's also eating some banana peel right now. He loves banana peel. Guys, look at them using the feeders. They're so cute. I love it. So I'm here looking at the aviary and guys, seriously, look at this fiddle leaf fig. See those leaves? 
They're huge. Whoa. I love to see it. See? Doing so well. I mean, I have to see if those leaves get really dark. Because if they do, that's a good thing. If they stay light colored like this, then that means this plant is really, it's struggling. But personally, I think this is good growth. I think the tree is doing really well. We've laced the soils with rabbit poo. So it's got lots of good natural fertilizer. And here's a view of the side of the plant. When it came to us, it was in okay shape, but it was rough. Like see those leaves, they were yellow, but now the plant looks like it's really recovering. It likes this spot better than where it was at the nursery. So I'm really happy, yay. I want it to grow huge and tall. So guys, I'm just here in the aviary picking off dead leaves and stuff. And guys, look at how beautiful the birds are. Ah, white canary with an owl finch, with a diamond finch. Oh, so stunning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they saw me holding this and they saw me lift it and it startled them. Hi guys, you look stunning. Love, love, love you guys. And also look, check out this tree. The Alibangbang Bang tree. Um, or as they call it, an orchid tree. Look, so you know it's been flowering, right? But it's now bearing fruit. There are beans. Wait, let me see if I could see it. Like these cool looking beans all over the tree. So sweet. So this tree, needless to say, is doing really well. There's like new growth as well. See, new buds. I love that this tree is doing well and I do feel like it's grown longer now and it looks like it's reaching over to this vine. Yay! So my giant pothos lost all its large leaves but that's okay. It's normal I guess during establishing but look this is new. It's now like wanting to attach to the wall. I can't wait. I can't wait for this giant pothos to just crawl up the wall. That'll look epic. Um, another thing too is this philodendron here, beautiful philodendron, is now attaching also to the wall. See? Yay! Also can't wait for this to climb. The ficus elastica doing well. This, well, I've been calling this monstera, but now I don't think it is monstera. Some of you guys are saying it's not. What is this? Is this a type of philodendron too? Anyways, it's also climbing the wall. New growth up there, yay. Our staghorn fern so far doing well. Now this vine here, sadly, it was doing well at first, but now it's, a lot of it has died. I think it's because of the pot. We might transfer it to a new pot or put some other climbing vine here and see if it does well. But my idea was for this to crawl across this vine and it has these beautiful white flowers. But the yellow variety of that vine is still doing well. And I mean, I still hope it will climb this vine and shoot out its beautiful yellow flowers. Such a gorgeous day in the aviary. The birds are flying all around, never a dull moment. I mean, birds at every corner, look at that. This fountain is looking gorge. Look at this. This was that expensive plant. Is this expensive, is it a philodendron? And it's sending out new leaves, yay. So it seems to be doing okay here. But all of these border plants love being planted here because the little droplets that splash from this pond go into their planters. See, so they get constant like moisture. It doesn't sit, the, it doesn't get waterlogged because these pots have drainage holes, but they have all the water they, they need. Plants are doing so well. I'm actually loving this philodendron here. At first I didn't, now I do. It's coming to life now. We've hidden the, the hose that feeds the filter, that is attached to the filter with this. 
sphagnum moss along with this hanging plant which is gorgeous it's just all so pretty rj garcia did all of this my partner he's so good and you know what originally we wanted to change this these red lava rocks but they're growing on me and essentially it's acting like one large biological filter so i guess it's cool we might keep it we'll see hi guys <laughs> Do you need new nesting material? Do I need to refill that pot with like hay? Have a look at the gorgeous sun that streams in here. It's just so pretty. And it's no wonder this, uh, this fiddle leaf fig is doing so well here. Get some nice sun up there. Please grow, go. We've given it a massive pot in hopes that it'll really just grow. Also doing well is this creeping vine this purple silver vine, I love it. I've always been in love with it. Been planted since aviary generation one, like literally. It took over a year to finally establish and it's doing so well now. It's crawling across this wall, look. And it's now grabbing on to this orchid, see? And crawling over here. It's doing quite well. I'm so happy. And look, it really matches with the orchid too. I suspect it'll climb this way, this way, all the way up the Monstera and up there. That would be the dream. See, we've got orchids here, just hanging here, love that. This vine plant is actually also crawling back there and up there. See it? Right up there. So I'm hoping it also climbs that way. This plant here with the poofy flowers Still doing quite well. I'm surprised. I thought it wouldn't, but it's very established now. Like, see those new growths? RJ really loved this plant, and at first I did not like it. I'm sorry, plant. I, you grew on me, your beauty. At first I thought it was kind of ugly, and I felt like, okay, this plant is going to die in the first week, but let's make RJ happy and put it in. But guys, it's clearly thriving in this corner here. So I'm happy about that. And this white canary is just checking, checking things out. So a lot of you are saying that the birds won't bathe in this highly fast moving pond. Um, I do see birds like this one drinking from the edge. Cause like, see how, see how the sides create these little puddles. I see them drinking from that. Um, but the birds mostly bathe on in these puddles you see these see these puddles it comes from the water that splashes from the water fountain and there are always these puddles here they never go away and so the i've caught the birds bathing in that so that's cool the chiflera plants that i planted are doing okay i think they're going to do well in the soils and it's amazing we didn't have to buy them we just had to clip them from our yard hey guys eilish is so sweet she now comes up to greet when I come into the farm lot, she comes to greet. But why do you greet me with your butt? Hmm? <laughs> Arjun and I have been talking, and yes, we will eventually build, probably in February, a front gate or front fence. Yay! Ew! She's pooing right in my face. Um, which is good, because then we can let our goats roam free. Our plant... Planters will need some kind of protection though. They'll need like a greenhouse type mesh, I think. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the goats can roam free, chickens, all of that. Oh, Eilish, you are so, so sweet and tame. On the first day she arrived, she was just unsure and like kind of scared, but now she's <laughs> just a sweetheart, just like Billy. So guys, we're going through old materials that were used for building our home found this nice slab of marble and um, RJ's idea was to use it for a sink. We're gonna build a sink on this side lot because currently we just have hoses around but it would be helpful to have a, a proper sink that we could use. You know like you've been touching the animals, you've been petting the goats and possibly the lizards, handling eggs from chickens and all of that. It would be good to have a, a sink here on this side that we could just wash our hands um, with 
and especially like to avoid cross contamination because with the birds in particular they can spread disease to each other like bird avian flu and all of that um and to humans so it's good to have um a proper wash area i think on this side plus we're always like we have hands in the dirt all the time we'll be growing things right so it'll just be very helpful to have a sink on this side and we're going to use some of that leftover marble that we've used for i guess our counters all right guys so whew, i just did half an hour of sauna and i swam guys it's starting to get warm like not the water but the weather is starting to warm up now mondays have become my hard rest day where i don't do nothing um because for tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and even sunday i'm working um so today is my hard rest day tomorrow will be partially rest but i'll also work and then work gets more and more and more all the way till saturday and sunday when i'm it's crazy like i do nothing throughout the day but work like morning to night but guys while i was hanging out here on the furniture i wanted to show you something so i'm looking at the forest it's been a while because i haven't really been swimming because the water's been cold but again like it's starting to warm up slowly and i'm looking at the forest guys and look remember what i said about i'm trying to enjoy all the foliage like while it the forest is thick well because the weather is getting warm the trees are now starting to shed its leaves again and i'm starting to see more brown like do you see that like see those vines out there here see how like some growth is starting to die out now well it's because it's not raining as often and it's starting to get hotter during the days um and so soon by summer which is around february march april the trees kind of shrivel up they lose their leaves and they self preserve it's almost like hibernation but for heat it's called estivation um so the the trees kind of self preserve in the summer here which is backwards from north america where summer and spring all the trees are blooming right um and then fall and winter that's when the trees self preserve but here in the philippines it's the opposite when it's cooler that's when all the plants live their best lives and that's when they focus on new growth like this tree here i'm looking at this tree and i'm seeing that it's bigger than last year but now it's going to shed some leaves and self preserve it's not going to really grow during this time of heat um and it'll just have to wait till the next rainy season to bloom oh the seasons <laughs> the philippine seasons It's kind of nice though to be able to see into the forest now like see I can look into that hill I can see in a bank like the bank of the little creek there a hill I can see all the ground foliage there in the forest so that's kind of nice it's a nice view but I I'm going to miss seeing this forest full of green so this is the new pot that RJ bought I like it <gasps> it's so pretty right guys it actually matches the pool deck much more so cool and it's completely empty see i love it so we had a lot of plants cut out a lot of the vines cut out because this vining plant do you see it it went all over okay see those purple vines the pretty purple flowers which are climbing climbing the roof that's what this is and it's like it was choking all our plants so like some of the trees are like this for example this kalachuchi plumeria it like shouldn't be like this but we suspect that it's because it was being choked by the vines the pretty purple flowered vines so we had to rip all of those pretty purple flower vines from this area and um hopefully these plants just bloom back to the way it was when we first planted it. And guys, look, the wind blew this bamboo stalk. It broke. It's from our neighbor's yard and it broke and it fell on the staff house roof. It's okay. It didn't damage anything. That's one big piece of bamboo. Guys, 
We just received two new family members from Mabuhay Squad and our friend, architect Roald, who gave us all of those birds, that, the last birds that came in. Canaries, diamond finches, um, what else? Like a whole bunch of birds. Blue, goldian finch, shaft-tailed finch. And guys, look, he gave us two singing canaries. So they already sing. Yay, I can't wait to hear their singing. And look how cute they are. Oh, I love the color. This is a red factor, the one on the left. The one on the right has a funny hairstyle. It's so cute. Hi, guys. I'm just going to let them hang out in the aviary for a sec in their cage so they can kind of like, like take in their surra surroundings and kind of get used to the environment. This is something that I saw the aviary in uh, Niagara Falls do. So every time they had a new bird, they would keep them in a cage. And I'll just kind of let them get used to the surroundings before actually letting them out. So I'm gonna do that too here. Mobile High Squad, it's nighttime. And I'm having a nighttime snack. Eating my last caramel chocolate bar. All you Canadians know this brand. It's my favorite chocolate bar ever. The first time RJ and I had COVID, the only thing that would break our fever was this caramel chocolate. And it's just so yummy. And this is my last. So to my family who's coming here, <laughs> mommy, guys, my mom's coming. And my tita and Karna and my Aww. aunts and uncles, my cousins, they're coming guys. Like in the next little while from Canada. I'm so excited about that. And before that, also some special guests, a special family will be here. We'll be hosting them. Not gonna say who it is yet, but maybe you guys can guess. Um, but if any of my family from Canada is watching, mommy, Titan Karna, please, caramel chocolate, please bring. Thank you. It looks like this, guys. The inside, it's like caramel tea. See? Mmm. See guys, it looks like it looks like this. And then when you bite it, it's full of this soft caramel. Mmm. The best chocolate ever. Good morning, Mabuhay Squad. How you doing? Did you sleep well? Guys, it's early morning and I'm going in the aviary. Hi guys. Oh my goodness. This one sticks out like the pink elephant in the room. Look at that gorgeous red factor canary. Oh, it's like so visible and so beautiful. Hi there, welcome to the aviary. So guys, architect says that this is already singing. So I can't wait to hear its song. Ooh, this is a dream. I've been dreaming about this for years. Um, where is the other one? Let's see. There's the white canary. He or she, we don't know what it is. Also given to us by architect um, several days ago. So fat. Um, apparently the canaries won't breed in a community aviary, so that's good to know. So this is no longer a gaviary, guys. There are females in here. <laughs> oh, there's the yellow canary all the way up there. And you guys, you guys have to see it. It has a funny hairstyle. It's one of those, those birds. Oh, now the white canary has come down to join the red one. You happy to see your own kind? Oh, he's beautiful. And then look, the diamond finch right there. <gasps> And the Java Finch. Oh gosh, you guys are stunning. And the Goldian. <laughs> this is one of the blue Goldians, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and the Shaft Tailed. All of these birds here were given to us by Architect. Honestly, so kind. Thank you so much, Architect, for the kind gifts. Come on. I know you want some seeds. Come on. Guys, this white canary almost landed on me. And with birds, if you have a little bribe, they just might 
come to trust you enough to land on you. Come on. It's thinking about it. You got it. Come on. Mm -hmm. I won't hurt you. Oh my gosh, that was so close. <gasps> I didn't want to make a noise. But see? Here you go. Here you go. Go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it trusts me enough to not fly away. The others flew away. All right. This was good enough. All right, guys. Freshly cleaned plate and giving them a nice seed mix along with some egg food, which is like this sort of like pellet that uh, contains egg and healthy proteins and stuff. There you go, guys. And believe it or not, the birds will finish all of this. We have to top this off by like afternoon. Go! Look at all the birds up there. It just takes a few birds to start to get them all to come. Look, see? Ah, stunning! Stunning! Beautiful! See, this canary just stands out. Go on. You can do it. Breakfast is served. And of course, we've got fresh water in freshly cleaned bowls for them. Even though they do drink from this from the sides of this water fountain and on the floor, we still offer clean water for them to drink. It's a beautiful morning. Daddy, good morning. Good morning. Do you have a joke of the day? Oh yes, I got a joke of the day. Okay, why did the physics teacher yeah. break up with the biology teacher? <laughs> That's already a joke in itself. Yeah. Why did the physics teacher break, break up, up with the biology, biology teacher? teacher? Why? Yeah. Because they got no chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. Hi chickens. Just dropping in to see what's going on. Okay, so final verdict is for the silkies. We're just not going to collect the eggs. Just gonna let them collect here because I did some research and according to online and the silky community, <laughs> guys, there's an online silky community. Um, she has to lay about eight to 10 eggs before the mom sits on it. So right now these eggs are in like a diapause. They're, they're not gonna develop because they don't have heat. So they kind of like, they kind of like freeze in development until she has about eight, and then she'll sit on them. So we'll see. Over the next two weeks, we'll let this collection of eggs grow. Yes, mama. You keep laying them eggs. <laughs> and you keep breeding with her, okay? I would like some baby silkies running around. Thank you. And guys, there are two more eggs here. I believe... I don't know whose they are, though. I have to see who's sitting on them. If it's the silkies, then we'll leave them. If it's the bigger chickens, we'll eat them. Good morning, Eilish. Yes. You ready to eat some grass today? Daddy's looking for a proper bed for you. So you don't have to sleep on a pallet. All right, Kuya Irvin is leading her to her spot. <gasps> Billy is so happy to greet her in the morning. We've carefully measured distance so that she can get away from him in case she needs to. But I cannot wait for these goats and our chickens to free roam here. Can't wait. Daddy RJ's working on it, guys. Don't worry. Good morning, birds. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? How about you guys, pheasants? Ooh, guys, the male's colors are starting to come in beautifully. Look at that. <gasps> Gorgeous. I think they still don't have names, guys. What should we name them? Oh yeah, guys, last and final update. So the bunnies are there. And guys, we have new skinny pigs. Another one of you Mabuhai squad offered us your skinny pigs 
and we adopted them. We have a whole bunch now, and they're so happy. Hi there. They're so happy. Look. <laughs> they're older than this is our first skinny pig, and the other one is somewhere in there. The younger skinny pigs are smaller, clearly, but when they're older, they look like this. Aren't they cute? And they're all like huddled in there. They'll be coming out soon. I love, but we might move these skinny pigs to their own enclosure, just so that they could have a larger space and you know, their own, their own privacy from the bunnies. This bunny is totally infatuated. Here, have some kanko. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I love them. You're so tame now. And they're so cute when they eat. So guys, also an update on their health. If you look at their ears, they kind of have like these, it looks like a, a bad eczema. Like I don't want to touch the ears right now, but turns out they have ear mites. Um, and it's something that bunnies regularly get. So now they're on this medicine called Ivermectin. Remember that medicine that was used to treat COVID? Well, the vet gave us Ivermectin to put in their water. So that's gonna get rid of the ear mites. So if you guys have bunnies and they have like, it looks like a rash, see the edge? Those are ear mites and they're very common in bunnies. I never got them as a kid like with my bunnies. So this is my first time dealing with them, but here in the Philippines, bunnies regularly get them. Um, but it's easily treatable through uh, ivermectin. You have older siblings now. <laughs> Guys, what should we name the skinny pigs? Guys, one thing I notice about the blue napes is check out the beaks. Look at how healthy the beaks are of these birds. It's so bright orange. I've never seen their beaks that bright orange. I do feel like being here in the aviary has really helped them. Awesome. It's like strikingly orange. See, look at that. Wow. What a healthy beak. Oh, so good. Being out here has really upped their health in my opinion. All right, guys, so thank you so much for tuning in to another vlog. RJ and I are going to head to Manila. We have uh, some work to do there and some random things. I need a haircut, guys. It's a little, my hair's a little wild, but Mabuhay Squad. Thank you so much for joining us on today's adventure or this week's adventure. Really means a lot to us that you guys are part of our journey. And yay, we have our own chicken eggs now. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> These homestead joys, guys. Um, and love reading your comments. So leave a comment if you haven't yet. Um, we love hearing your feedback, seeing familiar screen names and people who come by to watch the vlogs. It means a lot to us. Oh yeah, guys, also forgot to say, Ants Canada trended yesterday, yay! In, in the US and Canada um, at number 12. It, that's crazy! All the hard work is definitely paying off. <laughs> um, that's our fourth week in a row that we've trended now, yay! Thank you so much AC family, it means a lot to us. That video currently has over 1 million views in like a day. That's crazy to me. Um, I'm so grateful for the support for the Ant channel. Thank you guys so much if you guys are watching. And be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's vlog as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. I know you guys have been doing that. Thank you so much. And if you haven't yet, do hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhay squad because we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye! Mm -hmm.